Starfield. It's the gift that keeps on giving. If you ask me, the lifeblood of a Bethesda game is the mods. Don't get me wrong, obviously you need a solid base game that people will be interested in, that they'll be engaged in, and that will make them wonder about future possibilities. But what actually I think keeps Bethesda games selling for the long term is the mods and the possibility of new content, additions, enhancements that just keeps the game fresh. I mean, if it wasn't for mods, Skyrim would not have sold anywhere near as many copies, if you ask me. And uh, it. Okay, so, so there's a lot of truth to this, but a lot of non truths to this, I guess. I don't know how many copies is a lot for Skyrim, but. People didn't buy Skyrim because it had mods, initially at least. The people who bought the 15 Deluxe Edition remastered version of Skyrim with literally nothing new. Th those people probably bought it for the mods. But everyone else didn't. People, bu uh, people buy primarily Bethesda games because it's good roleplay usually, it's fun, it's interesting, and it captivates most people. Which now no longer is the case as we all very much are of it. People know about modding for Bethesda games, that's true. There are a lot of videos where people are looking at like, Whoa, that's that's a very interesting mod you have right there. It completely turns around Fallout 4, how it, how it plays and everything. That's really cool. But the reality at the same time is, less than 1% of the people who play these games ever even think about uh, seriously installing a mod. And even less than that, probably ever install a mod to begin with. So, you know, it, it, is, a, it is an interesting discussion at the bare minimum. Would not have been worth to release so many editions of that game throughout generations, but the fact that mod support was there, the modders came in strong, and that, you know, consoles also got mods, I think really helped boost True, that game, which help. is why it's still seeing really solid numbers if you look at, you know, Steam concurrent players. Now, if modern Dude, the fact that there's 20k people probably right now playing Skyrim, those people are not playing Skyrim, okay? Those people are playing Elder Scrolls 8 at this point with mods. They're, they're, they're not playing Skyrim. Half of those games are literally now hentai text-based games, most likely, at this point. It is, it is insanity. Here's the side that... A Bethesda game is too boring and you know they start pulling out that's not a particularly good sign which is kind of the topic of today's video so there is this modding team that created this mod called Skyrim together and what this added was essentially online co-op for Skyrim you can delve into this world with multiple players it works fairly well it took a while for this mod to get made and there were some controversies involving them using skyrim script extender code without permission and stuff like that so there were some setbacks here and there uh, but they did correct where they needed to course correct and eventually they did continue development and announce a release date of july 8th 2022 the mod eventually did come out and it was fairly functional and it, from what i understand it's still you know they're they're still working on it and updating it where they can and it is a mod that was per i have heard about this as much as i understand it's functional but there's a there were at least a minute released there were a lot a lot of bumps a lot of bumps like revolutionary it literally added a multiplayer mode a co-op mode for skyrim uh that's not revolutionary at all by the way fallout new vegas has a, uh, has a mod like that years before this thing which is kind of incredible and they were hoping that they could do something similar for starfield but i think it was years maybe i'm incorrect about that but fallout new vegas had that already <sighs> Unfortunately for Starfield, it's no longer 2011. The things I could get away with for Skyrim in terms of just dated game design, dated technical elements that translated into Starfield, combined with the fact that Starfield is missing what Skyrim has, which is one cohesive handcrafted open world that you can lose yourself in Bro. because there's just so much empty space, so much dead volume in the form of space and procedurally generated content that's not all that interesting. Starfield has lost a lot of its luster 
combined with the fact that it inherits a lot of Bethesda's bad habits, and the end result is that modders, some modders are deciding that it's not worth making their mods for Starfield. Now, speaking... Yeah, peep... Oh, nice pause. I love this. Uh... Order today. So what... Speaking about modding for Starfield, it's it's hilarious. It's it's like everything Todd Howard says is destined to turn into a lie in one uh, one way or another. Careful if Todd Howard ever ever says that we live on a sphere, because you know then 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 flat Earth finally gets its revenge. You know, it's only a matter of time before a miracle happens. You know, again, Todd Howard says. Starfield is the best moddable thing in ever for the test. We, we, we made it for modders. And every modder is, is saying the opposite. This is the worst thing for modding ever. Starfield has made modding 50 trillion times more complicated than it needs to be for no reason, no gain, no anything. It's pretty hilarious. It's pretty sadly hilarious, I guess. What's going on with this particular group of modders? Well, they've decided that Starfield is just not an interesting enough game for them to pour manpower and resources into this mod to translate this mod for Starfield. Keep in mind that they're, you know, they're not making money making this stuff. This is a passion project, and if they're not passionate about the game that they're modding for, then they're not gonna be passionate about the mod itself, which is why we're seeing headlines like this one from IGN. Skyrim Together modders aren't making a multiplayer mode for Starfield, but the code is now open source in case anyone wants to take over. So on Discord- Someone's probably gonna take it over though. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty easy way to get noticed as a modder, honestly, if you just take it over. Open code, make it, Bethesda's, uh, uh, you know, paid mod store comes into play. Bam, boy. You, you got yourself a deal. They released the following statement about Starfield, and they had some rather harsh words to share about their Starfield experience and why they ultimately decided... It this game is fucking trash. Yeah, I, I, I think there's a problem here. I think that maybe, you know a couple of negative things about this it's not worth making this mod for starfield so it reads right here let's talk about starfield when the game released i was hyped like a lot of people but probably for different reasons i spent launch day and a few days after reverse engineering the game and porting over gameplay hooks from skyrim together to a potential starfield together mod i ported about 70 percent of skyrim together reversed code to starfield together there was just one problem, and this is a direct quote. This game is fucking trash. Yeah. Oof, that, ooh. Like, that is not a, I can see the appeal of this game, but it's not for me. It's straight up just a comp- I can't see the appeal of this game. I think if someone's enjoying Starfield, they, they have a brain problem, okay? There's no other way to describe it. If you're enjoying Starfield, if you're unironically one of those people who, who are like, Oh, you can enjoy Starfield properly, you need 50 hours in a new game plus 3. I, I, I just think there's issues. There's a lot of deep-rooted issues. Probably a lot of self-hatred, honestly. Uh, maybe uh, an astoundingly low toaster of an IQ that doesn't turn off even uh, at the proper times. Maybe something like that. Because what is there to enjoy about Starfield? It is as bland as in anything, and that's the, and I'm putting it in nice words here. Okay, now I'm I'm saying it in a nice way. Starfield is is as bland as it can be. The dialogues are just pitifully boring. The the dialogues are probably honestly the worst part about this game because at the, at the start. You're kind of okay with the dialogues and you get a little bit uh, goofed around in it because you don't expect all the dialogues to be the exact same. You don't expect all dialogues to be as stupid as they are. You, you're at the start, it's like, okay, this is a pretty mediocre dialogue, but this is not anything important. And then you play on and you realize, oh, oh shit, this is, this is literally every dialogue. There's no depth, there's no finesse, there's no nothing. This is as sad as it gets. Yeah, it is. The fact that every single NPC that you talk to 
is instantaneously your best friend from kindergarten and then they reveal to you absolutely everything you ever want to know. Uh, the stupid way that they talk, the absolute lack of any depth whatsoever, it's crazy. Plead, admonishment, and rejection of this game, a stark contrast to their passion for something like Skyrim. The modder continues, I didn't realize this until after I actually started playing the damn game a week after launch. The game is boring, bland, and the main draw of Bethesda Games exploration in a lively and handcrafted world was completely gone. And that was my issue with the game as well, my primary issue. By the way, one thing. Yeah, people are saying, oh, handcrafted locations are better. That's fundamentally not true. There is absolutely no real problem with AI-generated locations. The problem that Starfield has with AI-generated locations, terrain and whatnot, is that it's absolute trash. If Starfield had, I don't know, for example, 300 or 400 different tile sets to generate a planet from, congratulations, you're pretty happy about that. If Bethesda had 400 different building tile sets to generate, you would also be happy about that. But instead, what do we have? Three different caves and maybe three different uh, houses. That's it. Yeah, with RNG generation like that, it is pretty shit. It definitely is pretty bad. And no one likes it, obviously. So, you know. Uh, uh, you know, passively generate Not passively, what's the word here? AI generated content is not necessarily bad. But it's the fact that obviously no one no one in Starfield's team even tried to make this game properly. So, you know, there, there's, there, there's nothing for the AI to work with. If you have entered your third cave in your life, congratulations, you have probably already been in that cave. And you're gonna recognize it because they're blatantly identical. It's so dumb. With this title, it's the one thing that makes Bethesda Games Bethesda Games and Starfield ironically and leaning into its space motif, uh, it loses that sense of go anywhere and find something interesting to do because everything is so segmented now. They focus so much on volume over density that they had to split that volume into a bunch of little pieces with tons of loading screens in between. And the end result was that the sense of exploration of just like kind of go somewhere and always find something interesting was completely gone because you're yep, fast traveling everywhere. And then if you go to a procedurally generated planet, most of it is empty when you do find- I mean, if you're not fast traveling in Starfield, you're an idiot. Because man, that there's a reason the game- uh, There's a reason the developers did one thing in Starfield, and that is give you 15 different ways to get to the quick menu travel, okay? If you press F for uh, the information tool or whatever it's called, the information HUD, you actually have a fast travel option there. Every every menu in Starfield pretty much leads you to fast travel. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> At least the developers understood that everyone wants to fast travel because honestly, if you try to explore anything in Starfield, you're an idiot because there is nothing to find. And you just feel like an idiot for attempting it. So, fast travel, good. But then again, fast travel is trash. But, you know, ironically, fast travel in Starfield is the best thing that they did. Because, man, imagine this game without fast travel. Wow. <laughs> it's really sad. It's really, really sad find content it's repetitive procedural stuff that has no real dramatic impact on your gameplay experience or on your progression and the handcrafted stuff just feels so split apart now that despite this game technically being bigger everything just feels kind of smaller what they did was they took an open world map like skyrim's and then they chopped it up into a hundred pieces and just kind of put little piecemeal things on different planets yep and in between those planets is because the irony is, by the way, the handcrafted stuff, some of the handcrafted locations are really good. They, they feel exactly like you want them to feel. But considering you find one handcrafted location, I don't know, every 20 hours? Yeah, that kind of ruins it. It's just a whole lot of nothing. There's just this hub called space that is not interesting to explore or traverse through so you're often just kind of skipping through a lot of empty space engaging in loading screens 
fast traveling and that becomes the exploration loop and it just it, it really lost to me what made bethesda games bethesda games and it would seem as though this is something that this modder was afflicted by Anyways, everyone already knows this. Most people agree. There's no need to further repeat the point. Just read any of the dozens of reviews online. And those reviews, while there were initially a lot of glowing reviews, I think as more time went by and as more people play the game, those reviews slowly began to... Paid shills. Uh, ...really highlight the flaws of this game. Even on Steam over time, we saw this score go from positive, and now it's at a mixed score of 66% total from a whopping 84... Yep, and going down, 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 down. Because new people who have never watched a Starfield video are finding this, seeing a screenshot like this and saying, yeah, I would like to try it. And... The average person is not going to think Starfield's good, okay? Let's just leave it to that. 4.8 thousand reviews. Almost 85,000 reviews now. That's a good sample size in stark contrast to something like Skyrim, which overall is sitting at a very positive review score of 94% from almost 150,000 user reviews. The modder concludes with, that said, I won't be continuing development on Starfield together. I'm not going to put my heart and soul into a mod for a game as mediocre as this still i did work on it so i'll just throw my reverse engineer code online in the open source tilted evolution repo in case anyone wants to finish it let me be clear though what i did so far is port reverse engineer code and hooks over there is no playable version of starfield together right now i'll upload the code later today so He's giving people an opportunity to finish this, uh, and, and you know, the, a bulk of the work, 70% of the work is done, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> That's funny. This, uh, and, and you know, the, a bulk of the work, 70% of the work is done. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> the most used icon is, is, is the funny one. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of people also using this. This is hilarious, bro. This is great. Most people are just laughing about it. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but uh, this is not something that this mod or the originator of, you know, Skyrim Together wants to continue engaging with uh, because he finds it to be a waste of time and just kind of a passionless project. That's the thing about any game's modding scene. For it to thrive, the base game has to attract enough attention that modders will feel passionate about making mods for this game. They'll feel passionate about an audience that's equally enthusiastic about the game and its possibilities of expansion but Starfield, because of its mixed reception and because of the fact that it's relying so much on modders to fix its myriad issues, I think we're getting to a point where... Why wouldn't Skyrim rely on modders? I said this again, I'll, uh, I'll said this, I said this before, I'll say it again, okay? Why would Bethesda, if, Bez, if Bethesda implements the paid mod store, finally... And people accept it, which they will this time, because, you know, time has passed, the world has changed, okay? Let's be real about this for a second. Why would Bethesda ever finish a single game? If there's no minimap, just just let the modder make it, sell it for five bucks, and Bethesda makes extra money. Bethesda no longer will ever need to finish a single game that they start because of the paid mod section. Because people are gonna finish for you. Don't add an inventory system at all. Mods are gonna... Well, there's a payable mod that you can buy there that does that for you. Talent point resets not available. Paid mods. Paid mods. Paid mods. Minimap. Paid mods. Paid mods. Paid mods. Paid mods. Uh, the, game, the, the game explodes after 30 minutes of play. Paid mods. Paid mods. Paid mods. This is going to be a great future. Some modders are just, you know, they're getting tired of having to fix Bethesda stuff. And just in terms of the general gaming audience, you can see that interest surrounding Starfield. Has People who work for free and get uh, get punished by the community when they, when they want a little bit of recognition or ask a donation for a mod. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh man, they're getting tired of that? Well, I can't imagine why. ...has diminished quite quickly with a 24-hour peak concurrent players for Starfield right now sitting at 15,000 players from an all-time peak of 330,000 players, which is actually lower than Skyrim's current 24-hour peak of almost... I mean, it has been like that for a month now, not gonna lie.
those 19,000 players, 18,799 players. We're talking about a game that came out in 2011. The special edition came out later, but you get the idea. It's an old game. And Which special edition? Skyrim has like 20 of them at this point. More people are engaging with Skyrim than they are with the brand new, the shiny new Starfield from Bethesda. Now, Starfield hasn't officially launched its modding tools yet, so who knows? Maybe once the modding tools launch and people really get to make some amazing mods for this game, maybe things can turn around for Starfield. But mods are possible to be made for Starfield right now. And when we're looking at some really prominent modders looking at the game and going, the game's kind of boring, it's trash, I don't want to make mods for it, it's just a bad early sign. Again, I do believe that for Bethesda games, modders and mods and modding is the long-term lifeblood of these games. And if Starfield falters on that front, and if modders are losing interest in Starfield... If the game didn't have any any life to begin with, what's the point of long-term? Then long-term-wise, Starfield might be in a bit of trouble. It should be noted that Fallout 4 tends to get around similar 24-hour nice. peak concurrent players as Starfield does, even a little. Dude, Starfield came out and, you know, Fallout 4 had its issues, right? And no no one was calling it exactly the greatest thing ever. St uh, Fallout 4 had a lot of issues. The store, you had, s you had so much less freedom. Again, yes, no, angry, yes, angry, no. Not fun, not fun choices, not gonna lie, Bethesda. But man, looking back after playing Starfield, Fallout 4 seems so good, doesn't it? It honestly seems like such an extremely good game in comparison. It's crazy. ...higher than Starfield does. And Fallout 4 tends to be one of the Bethesda games with the least amount of fanfare, but in comes Starfield to kind of become the new black sheep of the Bethesda series of single-player games. Fallout 4 is thriving more than Starfield is, and that's because despite all of the flaws that Fallout 4 has, it still has that sense of, like, a handcrafted open world where it feels like you can kind of go anywhere and always find something new or something interesting. Even with the lesser reception that Fallout 4 got, the Skyrim Together modding team are developing Fallout Together for Fallout 4. Ooh, so the fact that with Starfield, nice. they drew a line and said, this game is just not good enough for our efforts like that that kind of tells you even compared to fallout 4 just how short uh starfield fell for a lot of people now this is just one group of i don't know what he's doing with this microphone but it seems like he's tapping it or something like that there's 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 this there's this audible like you know tap sound constantly of modders maybe there are plenty of modders out there who have some grand ideas about ways they could mod this game and improve it or add some substantial new content especially because there's so much blank canvas to work with in starfield for better i guess for modders and for worse for players people just wanted something tighter and more focused but bethesda went too grand scale with it and uh, it ended up stretching the the whole experience thin they took a pub Okay, I'm gonna defend Starfield one time in my life, okay? The reality is, it's like... It's all about just a random generation, that it's bad on it at every level. Starfield is the first, uh, first Bethesda game where I leveled up and I did not care. It has never happened before. Every time you would level and follow New Vegas, it would be like, Oh man, I... Uh, you, you, you have 5% of the experience you need to level up and you're already looking at that bot and saying, mm, Oh baby, can't wait when you fill up, girl. Oh yeah. And when you level up, it's you're like, oh my god, yes. In Starfield, I, I caught myself leveling up three times and not giving a shit. Most of the time, honestly, when I was playing that game for eight hours, when I when I leveled up, I I completely didn't notice it, because level ups just feel so bad, man. Okay, but that's not even the thing I wanted to defend Starfield on. Obviously, that's not an offense of anything, right? Dude, Fallout Four, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout Three, Skyrim, all of these games 
had almost the exact uh, copy pasted inside for every building, every cave, uh, everything ever. There was now they looked unique, but it was pretty much the same thing. It was. In Fallout 3, find me a single building that does not look uh, decrepit and green. And when it doesn't look decrepit and green and, you know, made out of concrete, congratulations. It's slightly wider and still decrepit because there's only two types, uh, types of rooms that can exist in Fallout 3, for example. But that was never a problem because they were well designed. Starfield's problem is not that it's the same thing, but it's, it's just... It's the same thing visibly, and there's nothing interesting in those things. And that's all just a part of a bad, a bad random generation. Because the developers of Starfield did not give Star, uh, Starfield's random generation engine enough tools to work with. That, that's simply it. You can't have a million planets that have only, you know, a 3x3x3 three times three times three type of way that they can be built and what can be on them. Because that means that around the third, fourth planet, you're gonna exactly see the same thing repeat. Because there's just not enough, there's not enough variety there. Okay. So yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Puddles worth of content, and they didn't just stretch it out across an ocean. They stretched it out across a galaxy. You know what I mean? I'm not saying this is the nail in the coffin for Starfield. I think we'll really see how active the modding scene becomes when the modding tools officially release and then we'll see just what kind of spike in player start it's gonna be a shit show everyone's gonna just try and milk money no one likes starfield no one thinks starfield is a good game truly so what and that's that's a problem because if you can mod and put up, uh, put up paid things for skyrim why would you try you're just gonna try and do it as a money grab that's it most of those mods are just going to be blatant money grabs. Because no one truly cares about the game. And when you don't care about something, it's just a money grab. Best case scenario. Starfield gets if it gets any. And Bethesda is seemingly working on some updates to add some quality of life features. Uh, this is a statement from Bethesda that reads, we're also hard at work on many of the new features you asked for from city maps to mod support to all new ways of travel. This is a lie. You know what's going to happen? Bethesda is going to release uh, the paid mods before this happens. And then they're going to say, well, someone made a mod for the minimap, so we didn't feel like it's necessary to, uh, you know, implement it in the game. But only time will tell whether Bethesda's level of commitment is akin to, say, the commitment that CD Projekt Red showed when they not only fixed Cyberpunk 2077, but expanded its features and content significantly to ensure that Bro. the final experience could be more akin to what was initially promised and how the game should have originally launched. It sucks that we're going to have to wait for you know new ways of traveling which i'm assuming they're referring to vehicles to be able to be used on planets so walking around all that dead empty space is nowhere near as tedious and yeah now you can drive all across that dead empty space and get to your load screen faster wow <laughs> game changer am i right blowing those empty planets is more bearable and less insufferable but i would say that those quality of life new features and enhancements won't be enough to fix the core fundamental problem with the game through anyway yongi that was yongi yay good times good times starfield man it never disappoints in putting a smile on my face on how bad it is it's true i love it anyway this was Chris Sid saying thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't already have a nice day bye bye